One of the biggest questions I get asked by athletes is how can I improve my VO2 max and my lactate threshold? Now, no matter what sport you participate in, whether it's in lacrosse, football, mixed martial arts, or basketball, sustaining peak endurance are keys to your performance. My name is Dr. Yo from ECA Wellness, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my training protocols to improve both your VO2 max and your lactate threshold to optimize your metabolism and improve your endurance and peak performance. When you start to exercise, your body's demand for oxygen also starts to increase. As exercising workloads increase, your aerobic system, which utilizes oxygen to break down fats and carbohydrates into the energy molecule ATP, eventually becomes unable to supply all the energy needed. So VO2 max gives us a way to measure how efficient your cardiorespiratory system is in delivering the oxygen to the muscles and how efficient your muscles are in using the oxygen. How oxygen is delivered to the muscles is almost the same way how you would order a package on Amazon. See, for example, let's say you were a working muscle and you needed oxygen. You would place an order to the body's Amazon headquarters, the cardiorespiratory system. When headquarters receives the order, it packages oxygen and then ships it out via delivery trucks, the red blood cells. So when you are improving your VO2 max, you're improving how fast your cardiorespiratory system is in packaging oxygen, you're increasing the number of trucks on the road and how fast they are going, and you're also improving how fast you are opening up those packages. So with our Amazon example, you should have a better understanding of the VO2 max equation now. VO2 max equals cardiac output times the arterial venous difference of oxygen in the muscle. Cardiac output is defined as the amount of blood pumped out by the heart throughout the body in one minute. And the arterial venous difference of oxygen in the muscles is the amount of oxygen your muscles utilize. Cardiac output can also be defined as stroke volume times your heart rate. Your stroke volume is the amount of blood that your left ventricle pumps out per beat and your heart rate is the number of heartbeats per minute. So since cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times heart rate, we can rearrange that initial VO2 max equation to state that VO2 max is equal to stroke volume times heart rate times the arterial venous difference of oxygen in the muscles. And going back to our example of Amazon, stroke volume is the number of trucks on the road, your heart rate is how fast those trucks are going, and the arterial venous difference of oxygen is how fast you are opening up those packages. But what is the best factor in the VO2 max equation at improving and increasing your VO2 max? So in a paper published in 2000 at the University of Tennessee, researchers found that increase in VO2 max with training was due primarily to an increase in cardiac output and not an increase in the amount of oxygen taken up by the muscles. What this meant was that oxygen delivery to your muscles and tissues, also known as your cardiac output, was the most important factor and that the cardiovascular system contributed 70 to 85% of your VO2 max. And since we know that your cardiac output is equal to your stroke volume times your heart rate, and your heart rate has a fixed upper limit known as the maximum heart rate, then we can say that the major trainable factor in the VO2 max equation is your stroke volume. Many researchers and exercise physiologists believe that the longer you are training at your VO2 max, the greater you can increase your performance and endurance. The reason being is that as your body increases its demand for oxygen from intense exercise, your cardiovascular system begins an adaptive response to deliver more oxygen by increasing cardiac output through an increase in stroke volume. 
Another adaptive response to exercise and training is that you develop more capillaries in and around your muscles, which allow increased blood flow to and from exercising muscles. This increased blood flow enhances the clearance of lactic acid, thus increasing your lactic threshold. But as you exercise harder and harder, your body starts demanding more and more oxygen, and you start to breathe heavier and harder to get more of that oxygen in. You get to a certain point where there isn't enough oxygen to provide your body with energy, so your body starts tapping into the anaerobic system. So going back to our example with Amazon, imagine a scenario where there was an increase in oxygen orders and Amazon did not have enough delivery trucks to get those orders out. So what Amazon does is they hire a third party trucking company to help out with the deliveries. But the problem is these third party delivery companies are not very efficient and they're very costly. So the same idea applies to how your body utilizes both the aerobic and the anaerobic system. The aerobic system is a lot like Amazon's in-house delivery trucks because they're very efficient and they break down one molecule of glucose to 36 to 38 molecules of ATP, which is the energy currency in the body. But as you start to exercise more, your oxygen utilization increases and your oxygen demand increases, your body then starts to tap into the anaerobic system to help out with making ATP. But the problem with the anaerobic system is that it only makes two ATP for every one molecule of glucose. So right off the bat, you can see how it's not very efficient compared to the aerobic system, which makes 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. The other problem with the anaerobic system is that it makes the byproduct of its metabolism of glucose called lactic acid. And as you increase the amount of lactic acid, you quickly start to fatigue. Anaerobic metabolism is really good for those short bursts of energy, such as if you are powerlifting or if you are a marathon runner and you've got the last couple of meters left of your run and you need that extra boost of energy. So what are the normal values of VO2 max and lactate threshold? See, it's important to remember that both your VO2 max and lactate threshold are limited and affected by genetics, age, and sex. So it's very difficult comparing values between people. I always tell athletes, don't get caught up in what your VO2 max value is and compare it to someone else. You should first establish your baseline as a reference point for future comparisons. With that being said, even though lactic threshold and VO2 max are genetically determined, most people haven't reached their potential, so there is a lot of room to increase and improve your VO2 max. In unfit individuals, it is very common to see lactate thresholds at only 60% of their maximum heart rate, whereas in very fit and conditioned individuals, the lactate threshold can be close to 90% of your maximal heart rate. So what this means is that your lactate threshold heart rate is dynamic and trainable, and training goals should be focused on increasing your lactic threshold to near your maximal sustainable heart rate. Lactate threshold itself is trainable by increasing the ability of the aerobic system to supply power at higher workloads. When you can reduce and delay the contribution of the anaerobic system, sustainable power output is improved. The reason is because, as I mentioned earlier, your anaerobic system isn't very efficient in providing energy compared to your aerobic system. So even though there isn't a consensus on the best method to improve both your VO2 max and your lactate threshold, the understanding amongst most physiologists is that some sort of interval training is the key. And there are three important factors to remember and keep in mind about interval training when you're developing your own protocols. The first being the intensity of the interval, 
The second factor is the number of intervals you're doing, and the third factor is the rest period between each interval. One of the most well-known protocols was developed by the French exercise physiologist, Dr. Veronique Bella, and I have actually constructed and developed my own protocols around her theories and studies. Dr. Bella believed the concept of velocity VO2 max or VVO2 max, which is the speed you're running at when you hit your maximum aerobic capacity or VO2 max. And she said this was a better predictor of improvement of VO2 max, lactate threshold, and endurance performance. So she developed three main protocols to improve endurance performance, but it's important to keep in mind that the tests and studies that she did were in a control setting in a lab environment. So the first protocol she developed is commonly referred to as the classic Billa protocol, and it involves you running on a treadmill for three minutes at your VVO2 max, followed by a three minute light jog to get your heart rate down. And you do this until you are completely exhausted. And Dr. Billa showed experimentally that when someone followed this protocol for nine weeks, they were able to increase their VO2 max and their lactic threshold by 3%. The second protocol she developed was the 3030 version 1, which involved you running on a treadmill for 30 seconds at VO2 max, followed by a 30 second moderate jog recovery phase. Now what's interesting is Dr. Bella found that during this moderate jog phase, that your metabolism was ramped up near your VO2 max, which meant a better utilization and more efficient use of your time. And the third protocol she developed is commonly known as the 3030 version 2, the 6060 protocol. And what this entailed was you run at your VO2 max for 60 seconds followed by a 30 second moderate jog recovery phase and you would do this protocol until you were completely exhausted. When trying to develop and improve your VO2 max, my protocol uses a one-to-one -one ratio of maximal heart rate exercises to rest ratio at 10 minute intervals. So I take my heart rate to zone five or the 90 to 100% of my maximal heart rate for one minute followed by a one minute rest and cool down period. It is important that you maintain your heart rate in zone five so that you don't fatigue and end your workout early. I repeat this sequence five times for a total of 10 minutes per interval block. And then this is followed by a five minute recovery phase and then I resume the second block of my interval training. Now, I do this until I'm completely exhausted, and you will see as your training and fitness level starts to increase, that you can also start to increase the time intervals of your training. I believe that the period of rest is critical, and that you should spend a reasonable amount of time resting between each set. Now, in 2018, British researchers published a paper suggesting that longer durations of recovery facilitated higher training loads and greater training adaptations. I have found that when I do my one-to-one -one VO2 max interval training, that five minutes is adequate for recovery and to get me back to doing my next block of intervals. When training my lactic threshold, my protocol is either a three to one or a four to one work to rest ratio. And the exercises are going to be maintained in zone four or the 80 to 90% of my maximum heart rate. The principle behind these ratios and the lactic acid training is to get your body to adapt to dealing with an increase in lactic acid and to efficiently start to clear out the lactic acid. And just like the VO2 max training, as your body starts to get more fit and your conditioning gets better, you can start to increase the time intervals of your training. 
And finally, it is very important that you add zone two workouts, which are 60 to 70% of your maximal heart rate to your training program, because this is the zone where you see an increase in mitochondrial density that leads to a improve in oxygen utilization, an increase in fat oxidation, and an increase in your lactic acid clearance. So the basic principle in improving and increasing both your VO2 max and your lactate threshold is interval training. There are a lot of different recommendations and a lot of different protocols that have worked for different people. So I would love to know what intervals you guys are using and please share them down below in the comment section or you can send me a message on Instagram at ECA Wellness. And thanks so much for watching. If you guys like this video, hit that like button, click the bell so you get notifications when I've posted a new video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, ciao.